Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar from the Institute of Export and International Trade about empowering women in global markets, a special webinar being run to coincide with International Women's Day. And why are we running this webinar? And why isn't every day an International Women's Day? Well, data from the International Labour Organization has found that fewer than half of women are active in the global labour force compared with almost three quarters of men. Indeed, the Global Gender Gap report in 2020 also found that only 27% of women in work are employed at a managerial level, with just 18% working in top-level managerial positions. It's therefore clear that inequality does continue to persist for women, certainly in a professional context, and this is also true in international trade. International Women's Day is an important landmark in the diary to bring issues like this to the front of our minds. The Institute itself is on a mission to play its part in addressing inequality in trade, and this includes marking International Women's Day with events like this webinar. My name is William Barnes Graham, the Executive Editor of the Institute, and I will be your host today. But on the next slide, you'll see we have two fantastic panels. And I should point out that uh, from the outset that the format for today's webinar is largely discussion based, so we will not have particularly extensive slides uh, throughout today. But the first panel will be addressing the role of trade policy in addressing inequality, as well as some of the support initiatives that are available for women working in trade. We're delighted to welcome Sangeeta Kwana, a professor at Bournemouth University and chair of the Institute's academic board. Hunter Matson, a trade policy and research specialist at the Institute. And we're also delighted to be joined by Noreen Cesario, the president of the UK chapter of the Organisation for Women in International Trade, or OWIT. Our second panel is going to be hosted by the Institute's Chief Operating Officer, Kelly Walls, and she'll be asking questions to two of our members, Sylvia Novak, a Senior Customs and Foreign Trade Compliance Officer at Bose UK, who is also a former student with the Institute, and Tajinda Banwait, the Founder and Managing Director of Urban Apothecary London, a British brand evoking moods and memories for luxury candles and home fragrance, and also a Queen's Award winner. We'll be finding out about more of a, uh, we'll be finding out more about each of our panelists in a moment. But in the meantime, on the next slide, before we get going today, I'm going to ask a quick poll to find out a little bit more about you, our audience. And I should say at this point that our polls today are aligned with a survey by the challenges women face in trade being conducted by the Department for Business and Trade. So this one is asking, what is the main challenge you encounter in international markets? The options being knowledge about new markets, social capital in new markets, gaining sufficient finance, understanding and complying with new regulations, and other, and if you say other, please do say uh, what that is in the comments. While you're answering that poll, just a couple of housekeeping notes from me. Firstly, you can contact me with any comments or questions using the question panel on the control window, usually to the right hand side of your screen. We hope to get to a number of your questions today, though please note we cannot guarantee we will get to every question in the allocated time. Please also note that if your questions are short and clear, I am more likely to be able to read them. Finally, you will receive a recording of a webinar in a follow up email we will be sending over the next day or so. So I'll give you just a couple more seconds to answer that poll. Thank you everyone for responding. I'm gonna uh, close it now and share the results. So 62%, that's almost, uh, that's almost two thirds of you saying understanding and complying with new regulations. And that's something we're seeing quite commonly in a post-Brexit uh, scenario. But a quarter of you say knowledge about new markets, a tenth of you uh, about that saying gaining sufficient finance, 2% social capital, and uh, no one saying other. So good options in that poll to say the least. But on the next slide, without further ado, let's get into it. So I'm delighted to bring on our first panel. And the best way I think to get going here is I'm going to ask each of our panelists, uh, so that's Sangeeta, Hunter, and Noreen a little bit about what they do, their work in the area of gender and trade, and why today's event is so important. So Professor Sangeeta, if I could start with yourself, could you say a bit about what you're doing in this area currently, and why today's event is so important? 
Thank you so much. I love you. I need to meet yourself. A slight sound issue there. Um, Sangeeta, I'll come back to you in a moment. I think what you might need to do is turn your volume down. Um, but I'll, I'll, I'll ask the question to, to Hunter first, and we'll try to come back to Sangeeta in a second. So, Hunter, uh, can you say a bit about yourself, uh, what you're doing in trade and uh, in trade and gender, and why today's event is so important? Thanks, Will. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Hunter Matson, and as Will said, I'm a trade policy and research specialist here at the IOE and IT. And I um, started to the trading gender portfolio when I started at the Institute. We were uh, building a, a new policy kind of team at the Institute. And one of the first areas that we recognize that is, is critically important is trade and gender. So we kicked off efforts last year with the WTO Public Forum, which is an annual event held at the World Trade Organization in Geneva, where members of the public are invited in to uh, talk about issues that are relevant to the members and to the global trade and community. And I'll come on to that in just a few minutes about our activity there. Um, but that is where I kind of started my uh, work in the trade engineer portfolio and, and since then have begun exploring other areas where the Institute can be an active uh, voice in this space. Uh, and the panel today is just one of such interactions and we have many more exciting things coming up throughout the year. As Will said in his introduction, Today we are celebrating International Women's Day, but every day is a day that we should celebrate women in international trade. And to the best of my ability, I try to do that each and every day that I come to work. So I'm very excited to be part of this panel and looking forward to a great discussion with my fellow panelists today. Thank you, Hunter. That's, that's a really great, uh, a great way to introduce the, the panel. Uh, Sangeeta, should we try you again? I'm just gonna, uh, your turn. <laughs> Thank you so much and good afternoon everyone, good morning uh, wherever you are. Um, first of all, um, thank you so much for inviting me to this panel. Um, I am Sangeeta Khurana, I am the trustee director for the Institute of Export and International Trade. I'm also the chair of the academic board um, and it's a real pleasure to be on here. Um, during my, uh, my, in my day job, I'm a professor of international trade policy at Bournemouth University. Nice to meet all of you virtually. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sangeeta. And Noreen, uh, over to you. Thank you very much, William. Hi, everybody. Um, it's a pleasure to be on the board with Hunter and with Sangeeta, both of whom I've gotten to know recently. And Hunter, we've also shared experiences at the WTO. We'll talk about that a bit later. Um, for those of you that do not know me, I am here today as the president of OIT UK, which is the Organization of Women in International Trade. I have been active in this field at women, Women's Economic Empowerment and Women in Trade for the best part of a decade. Um, <clears throat> I'm also the chair of the, on the business board of the UK All-Party Parliamentary Group for Women and Enterprise, where I chair the International Trade and Exports Task Force. Um, and I've been active actively involved in doing research and working with other organizations such as Savitas and the UK Economic Blueprint where we've been looking at markets and how women entrepreneurs can access those markets both locally and internationally and obviously coming up with all the challenges facing us against trade, uh, access to finance, access to knowledge, access to signposting. We're going to talk about all of these today so I'm not going to go into too much detail. The other interesting aspect I bring to this is that I myself am an entrepreneur. I have, I used to be, um, I used to work with corporates under smaller and larger businesses. I now run my own business and that is Market Accents and I trade internationally. So I'm bringing all that to the table, which gives great input into perspectives on international trade. Looking forward to the conversation. Thank you. That's terrific. Thank you, Noreen. Thank you, Sangeeta Hunter too. I mean, if I can start, just actually going to pick up something on what you said, Hunter, which is around uh, some of the IOE's activity, including at the WTO forum. And I know you were you were involved with the <coughs> She Trades Initiative as well. So I just wondering if you could say a little bit about what the Institute did there and, and what She Trades is too. Of course. Thanks, Bill. So yes, as I said, the, the WTO has an annual conference that is called the Public Forum, and it happens in the autumn each year. And there are a few themes that carry through that conference and each participant is asked to pick one of those themes and to focus their interventions around that. So the IOE and IT, as well as OIT and Noreen, as she indicated, at last year's conference, 
uh, had an entire program around trade and gender. So we were very honored to host a high-level panel with Dr. Ngozi, the Director General of the WTO, uh, Pamela Cook Hamilton, who's the Executive Director of the International Trade Center, and a few female entrepreneurs who are part of the ITC's She Trades initiative. So She Trades is a program of the ITC where women entrepreneurs around the world can join this network, connect with other women in business, uh, get, get support through online training port portals and um, guides, and just find out the challenges that each other are facing and support each other on their journey. So the IOE and IT was privileged to sponsor four women from the ITC She Trades Initiative to come to Geneva for the public forum. We sponsored a coffee grower from Rwanda, an engineer from Mexico, a handbag maker from Bangladesh, and a textile and apparel business owner from Uruguay. And the, these four women were able to set up stands at the conference, and all conference participants could stop by and learn about their products, but more importantly, learn about their business models and their challenges and opportunities that they faced when they began their journey into international trade. We were also delighted to welcome two of those individuals, the uh, lady from Bangladesh and the lady from Mexico to this high level panel with Dr. Ngozi and with Pamela Cook Hamilton, which was entitled Breaking into Male Dominated Sectors. And on that panel, each of the women shared their heart touching stories of what their journey was like entering international trade and particularly these male dominated sectors. And as you might expect, they experienced sexism and chauvinism and really just um, not the type of experience you would want anyone to, to have to go through, but they were all very inspiring and they were able to share in great detail how they overcame those challenges and have become successful women in international trade. So it was a very uplifting uh, panel. Afterwards, uh, our Kev own Kevin, Kevin Shakespeare was able to provide an intervention to a panel hosted by OIT, and I'm gonna uh, let Noreen, Noreen talk about that because she had hosted that, but we were delighted to be part of that panel. And then after that, the IOE hosted our own panel, which was entitled Engendering Gender Equality in International Trade. And we brought together a panel comprised with our own Professor Karana as the chair, uh, our co-host of the panel, Mona Shrestha, mm -hmm. who is the CEO of um, Emerge, a Nepal-based business supporting women in uh, entrepreneur, entrepreneurship, as well as Simonetta Zarilli from the from Unktad and uh, Anush Dirk Bogosian, excuse me, from the WTO. And that panel was a great success. We started off highlighting some of the challenges that women face in international trade. And I know we're going to come on to that in just a few moments in this panel, so I won't dig too deeply into those, but I'd say that the challenges kind of uh, span across three broad areas, and those are social, cultural, legal, as well as internal. And what I mean by internal is, is the own confidence of women to start business and to, to try to move up into higher roles within the businesses. Um, but also that panel ended with some positive outcomes about what we could do to support women. And one of the key outcomes was that we need better uh, networking opportunities. And we're going to discuss that today and, and some of the networks that exist to uh, support women on, in international trade. We also need deliberate interventions from government. And we see some of that through some of the recent trade agreements that the UK and other governments are signing with dedicated provisions for women uh, in, in those agreements, but also uh, specific support activities. Um, and the ITC, going back to your point, uh, Will, on she trades, has a number of these where they help, they call them hubs. And throughout the entire globe, they have 11 concentrated hubs, which provide this really um, bespoke and, and hands-on support for women in business in those areas. So I'll pause there and turn over to the other panelists. But um, it's, you know, I, I, as I said a few moments ago, I'm very excited about this panel. I'm very excited to talk about the opportunities that exist to support women in trade, but equally to have a cold face and honest discussion about the challenges that still exist and the work that's needed to overcome those challenges. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Hansa. Um, you touched on it away, so we're going to come on to Norwin in a second, but Sangeeta, I just wanted to ask you first, I mean, Hunter's touched on some of the challenges uh, which are still out there at the moment. So I'm just wondering from, from your side, how significant is kind of gender inequality in international trade and what are the main challenges that you see that women are experiencing right now? Thank you so much, Will. Um, and, you know, what I'm really pleased to be at, at this panel, especially on International Women's Day, because this is a day when we um, celebrate the role of women in promoting gender, you know, in, in promoting um, 
uh, empowerment in raising awareness about the contributions that women make to society. So thank you so much for hosting this panel to IUE. Um, yes, now I'll go to the two main questions you asked me. The first question uh, you asked me was about how significant is the issue of uh, gender, in, gender inequality in international trade. So let's look at it this way. Women are 50% of this planet's, of this world's population. But if you look at how much they contribute to, to um, the economy, it's actually not 50%. They contribute just around 37%. Yeah. And if you look at women in the workforce, you find that only 39% of the women are actually employed uh, in the workforce. So this is actually telling us that there is some kind of gender disparity which we are seeing here. Now, but let's look at it at how trade can actually become an important driver of growth for women also, because we know trade has got very many benefits for um, countries worldwide. So I look at trade as a great driver of growth that can ensure that women are able to participate actively on equal grounds with men, especially when it comes to economic opportunities. Now, just to give you some um, some information uh, going back to the data, businesses that are involved in international trade employ more women. This is what research tells us. Now, if we break this up by developed and developing countries, we find that in developing countries, women make up nearly 33% of the workforce in firms that engage in trade, compared to 24% in non exporting firms. So this clearly tells us that trade has the potential to address the gender inequality that exists today. The second point I would like to highlight is that trade creates better jobs for women. Uh, workers in both developed and emerging economies, they actually constitute roughly 50% um, of these are more likely to be employed in the formal um, sector because, because it's all as a result of countries participating in the global value chain. So clearly the second point I would like to emphasize it that trade can help women move into the formal economy. And the third point that is really worth mentioning is that female participation, that female participation in the labor force, it has actually increased though it has been very small right but then there has been a move in the right direction having said this i would also like to add that there is considerable heterogeneity across different regions so trade trade is just you cannot say that trade is a panacea but what i would like to say is that trade is moving the dial of um, you know, the, the dial in the right direction where we are able to empower women and ensure that women are employed more in the formal sector and that they are able to use technology much more intensively. I hope I've been answered. I've been able to answer your first question. Uh, do I yeah. have a minute to talk about the challenge, the barriers you asked? I mean, I was going to wonder, actually, if, if we could bring in Noreen potentially at, at this point, because I guess Sangeeta's given a really great overview of how trade can be a lever for empowering women. But Noreen, I know you were, we were talking in, this, in the green room before about how there's challenges in making trade work in that way. So I was just wondering if you wanted to, to talk a bit about the challenges with trade uh, and empowering women. Okay, I'm just going to take a few seconds to talk about what OIT is, because just to make sure everybody is aware on the call. So OIT, which is the Organization for Women in International Trade, is actually an international business membership organization for both women and trade, working in all facets of international trade. And the whole scope is for us to promote the advancement of women in trade and business. So it sits very nicely in terms of what we've been saying. We are truly global. We've been established in 1989, and we have chapters in Canada, America, Africa, Europe, and the UK and we're growing very very fast so that is fantastic brilliant news um in terms of the challenges we have been doing a lot of work looking at 
what challenges are actually facing a lot of the chapters and a lot of uh, businesses, women traders in the areas where we are and obviously also where we're not. And we know that the challenges that a lot of them actually face, if you just want to put a headline out, we've got the signposting, lack of visibility, the fragmentation, uh, repetition of interventions, access to digital platforms and markets, lack of access to finance, funding and networks. And these are all points which we know we're going to be talking about more as the conversation goes on um, and the obstacles would vary and the challenges depending whether we're talking about markets which are slightly more mature like our own markets here where we still face a lot of challenges even though we have um, uh, quite a number of established traders already there. Um, Sanjita, you were talking about uh, the markets and how many female entrepreneurs we have actually in the market. I mean, I'm going to just, these are some figures we're putting together to see how we're doing in the UK. And we know that if we had to actually have more women entrepreneurs join the UK PLC economy, then we're looking at an, an upswing that would get us into the 250 um, increase as a number. So, and that is income directly on our bottom line. So there is quite a lot of scope in terms of moving us and helping us to move that dial. So here in the UK, we have to still upskill and train women entrepreneurs to get ready for digital, to find the access to the point skills they need. In other areas, we're talking of more challenges, potentially actually even moving across borders in Africa. There's a lot of issues facing them in terms of security at the borders themselves, in terms of actually having access to markets, let alone digital markets, and even getting into the value chain and getting into the supply chain of the larger businesses. So it, it, depending on the market situation, there are a lot of challenges that we face. Sangeeta, if I can go back to you, I mean, there's some challenges which are there, but what can I mean, what can we do about these challenges? So what role, to begin with, what role can policymakers or, or governments, organisations like the WTA, what, what can they do in this, in this context? Thank you so much, Will. It's very interesting that you ask me about the WTO because yesterday we were uh, at the launch of the gender hub that the WTO has um, um, formed. And interestingly enough, uh, I was one of the speakers and we have adopted the work program for the next three years. This means that we are going to be working extensively on the issue of linking trade and gender. Um, we already have around, uh, we have members um, of the hub from different parts of the world and we are growing very rapidly. So those of you who are tuned in, I would encourage you to go and look at the WTO website and support us uh, in making the hub a big success. Uh, having said this, we will be um, talking about inclusivity at the WTO uh, public forum again this year, which is due to be held in August, so please join us. Now, going back to your question on the role of policymakers, you know, and the WTO, what, can, what role they have, they would like to play. It's actually very important to ensure that vulnerable sections of the women are not left behind because let's look at it this way. There are some women who have been able to break through the glass ceiling, but very many of them have not been able to. And it is that section and segment of the population we have to be looking for. And going forward, it's, it has to be a collective approach. So if you were to look at trade policy, it has to be a gender inclusive trade agenda, which has to be placed on the table. And that's very much the talk of the town today. Uh, we see that governments, international organizations like the World Bank, OECD, WTO, and even the private sector companies, they are, in, they are increasingly incorporating a gender trade perspective into their um, activities. Um, and you know what? This practice has actually been spurred by pressure from civil society who have, who, um, have been highlighting um, the, you know, the importance of prioritizing women that have been left behind. So this, uh, the aspect of gender inequality is being discussed not only at the regional level, but national and international levels. Um, 
going back to what governments can actually do with trade policy it's actually very important to note that governments must generate long term gender inclusive growth programs and this can only be done by addressing the constraints that women face today in international business and international trade now i would also like to add that the positive impact of trade on gender equality hinges on political will and the commitment to sustain gender diversity uh, and equality in the economy so partnership between the public private and you know pu public and private sectors is really very important in addressing the existing gender inequality and finally i cannot uh, not highlight the importance of um, you know financial and non financial incentives that governments provide uh, especially to women owned msmes um, and the private sector so it is actually a proactive approach which i would suggest is the need of the r to address gender inequality that we are still faced with thank you Thank you, Sangeeta. So, and sadly, we, we've not got loads of time, so I'm, I'm going to just do a couple more questions on, on this panel because we do want to we do want to hear from the, the exporters shortly. But um, uh, Noreen, if I can go to you quickly, I was just wondering, from from OIT's perspective, what would you want to see from governments, um, whether that's in the UK or, or internationally as well? Thank you, William. Um, and actually, Sangeeta, you have actually touched on quite a lot of it. We need to see policies that are actually designed for women entrepreneurs and that fit into both the business models and the lifestyles. We know there's a difference between how women entrepreneurs look at to going into business internationally and at the moment a lot of the models that are out there the policies even the infrastructure it is not neutral it's very disadvantaged so we want to see governments go deeper and actually think about the impacts of the policies and the legislation that they're putting into place to see if they would be actually impacting the women entrepreneurs who are trying to build the businesses even if it's just a matter of having the infrastructure to support or providing the signposting that would help them to then find the tools get the training upskill and get more into the value chain so it, it is that level of being more aware and actually going deeper and broader in terms of adding gender to policy and legislation thank you thank you Noreen and speaking of signposting in a moment I'm going to post a link to the OWIT UK chapter website so um, that will hopefully give you uh, everyone an opportunity to find out a bit more about uh, what OWIT, OWIT do um, Hans I just want to ask one last question at this stage um, before we move into the second panel and I think it's an important one and one I'm certainly keen to know the answer to and that's just the role of men in, in all of this um, whether it's you know, at a policy level or on a day-to-day -day level what, what role do you see men having in, in empowering women in, in trade and, and beyond? Thanks Will. Uh, men have a crucial role throughout the entire process uh, you know I think first and foremost men have an obligation to speak up when we see injustice and inequality because it is there and even in places like the UK and in Western Europe, where we think we have gender parity, we, we truly don't, you know, and, uh, you know, I, I, as I said at the start of this, have, have been, had my eyes open to so many uh, inequalities that exist within our own kind of corridors, let alone as you move to other parts of the world. And, you know, beyond just international trade, we see the tightening of the regime in Afghanistan as of recent. And, how women don't even have access to education, let alone access to enter into professions in international trade. We also have seen uh, disruptions in Iran recently, and you know the the protests that have resulted in that have been pretty squarely um, put put down by the the government forces in control. Men must speak out in these instances. They must support their women colleagues, their family members, their friends, and you know, express to these policymakers and these regimes that this is important for them. We also really need to educate ourselves on these barriers, because as I said, as a, as a man in trade, many of the barriers that my women colleagues face are invisible to me. And just because I don't see them doesn't mean that they aren't there. So one of the most crucial things that men can do is to proactively research, to, to reach out to their uh, female colleagues and ask them and learn about these barriers 
so that they can then find the solutions to address these moving forward. And finally, as I said, go to your lawmakers. And when we see things like these gender provisions being implemented through the more progressive trade agreements that are, are coming out today, we need to make sure that they are meaningful and to the extent possible that they are binding. There's a lot of goodwill around these provisions, but they are non-binding. And mm. crucially, there's not a, a strong monitoring and follow-up mechanism. So one of the phrases that came out of our WTO intervention was mind the gap. And that's the gap between these policies and the intention of these policies and the actual implementation of them. So regular feedback loops need to be established so that we can speak to women in trade, find out if the policies and the provisions that are being enacted to support them are in fact doing what they were designed to do. And if not, have a collective voice back to policymakers to change them in the future to make them work for women in, in uh, entrepreneurship. Thanks, Will. Thank you. Thank you, Hunter. And thank you as well to Sangeeta and Noreen. Uh, we're going to close the first panel there. Uh, we, we may hear a bit more from Sangeeta at the end, hopefully, but um, we're going to move on to the next slide. We were actually thinking about doing a video at this stage, but I'm going to save that to the end instead and, and get going in with the second uh, uh, second panel, um, because I think it's important that we give our second panelists uh, as much of a chance as possible to talk about what they do. Uh, but I will just very quickly do a poll um, just while we're starting that panel and uh, just touching on what Hunter was saying just then actually about the gender provisions uh, in and chapters in trade deals just asking what awareness you may have of those in trade deals including with Australia and New Zealand. Kelly just while people are answering that poll I mean a really interesting first panel there I, I hope you agree I was just wondering if you could say a little bit about what you think the institute's role is both as a employer but also as a, a membership organization so uh, kelly what, what, what would you say to that thank you will um i think today's webinar has been a great opportunity for our members and the wider trading community to be inspired about the role that they can play and we can play in empowering women globally we've heard today already some of the opportunities that the ioe and it have supported like the initiatives supporting women in trade, including international trade centres, she trade initiatives, and the organisation for women in international trade. Um, internally, we continue to ensure that we have a good balance of both male and female team members, and ensure them that we have a good level of females right throughout the um, management, senior up to senior leadership level. Um, driving equality is a key mission for the IOE and IT. Um, and the webinar today is a great chance for our members to be heard and share some of the challenges that they are facing. As an organisation, we are going to continue to champion both male and female traders to be inspired about trade and continue to drive equality um, going forward. Thank you. Thank you, Kelly. That's a really, really stirring message. Thank you. That's really important um, to share. I just want to share the results of that poll very quickly. Uh, so 80 percent of you weren't aware of those chapters and 12 percent of you were uh, so thank you for answering that poll we'll feed that back into government but without any further ado um i'm going to hand over to kelly for the, the next panel um kelly if you can hand back to me at about quarter two but if, if, if the conversation's lively i think we're okay to over one slightly but um yeah over to you kelly and welcome on sylvia and Tejinder. hi uh, well thank you um and as i said today i'm really pleased to be part of today's webinar which is covering such an important topic of empowering women within international trade um, i'd like to start the panel session today by introducing our panelists um, so i'll introduce you one at a time so sylvia i'll start with you um welcome um today would you mind just introducing yourself your company telling us a little bit um about how long you've been a member and why you felt it was important to be part of today's panel Okay, um, hi everyone, um, thanks for having me. Um, so my name is Sylvia Novak and I'm a Senior Customs and Foreign Trade Compliance Officer um, for Bros Limited. Um, I'm also a part-time student at the Warwick University. Um, I have been a member of the Institute um, since 2018 and I wanted to join today uh, to learn and share some thoughts on how international trade can support um, gender equality and women empowerment. Thank you, Sylvia. Um, welcome to Jinza. Um, would you just like to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about yourself and your organisation? Thank you, Kelly. Hi, everyone. My name is Jinda Banwaita. I'm the founder and managing director of the luxury home fragrance brand Urban Apothecary. 
Um, I've been a member of the Institute um, of Export and International Trade for just under a year and I'm joining the panel today because I'm passionate about women in business and export. Thank you both. Um, so I'll start with a question firstly to Sylvia. Um, as we've seen from the first panel session, equality does still exist in the workforce and within trade. What are the challenges you've encountered that you're happy to share today? Um, okay, so I have not personally encountered any significant challenges in my workplace nor in trade. Um, however, that doesn't mean that problem doesn't exist. And for the purpose of this webinar, um, I was talking to my best friend from India regarding the challenges that women encounter um, in that part of the world. And just to give you one example, um, not everywhere in India women can inherit the land or it's very difficult for them. Um, the problem is very real and um, further research actually led me to the press, uh, press release by World Bank uh, from the March 2019 um, on women in half the world still denied land and property rights despite laws. Um, that is talking about um, these challenges and there is a mention to a stand for her land campaign which is really worth um, checking out. Um, so. But yes, of course, I am referring to only one out of many other challenges that women encounter in general and every day. Thank you, Sylvia. So, Ginza, would you like to share anything additional? I mean, I think, you know, um, everybody's going to have challenges. And I think that as a, you know, as a woman and a woman in business, you're always going to come up against something. So I think having valuable support and resources that you can go to is going to be key. Just on that, Tajinda, talking about support, where have you gone for support and inspiration in challenging moments? So I always go to family first, and I think that they're my most valuable resource. Um, so my parents both run, um, well, they used to run successful businesses um, over the years. So if they've not faced one of the challenges that I face, then it's very rare. Um, so an example of that is um, a couple of years ago, quite a few years ago now, uh, a couple of years in when we started our business, um, our candle manufacturer let us down at the busiest time of year. And I just sat down with my dad and told him what the issue was. And he just said, you know what? It's all process. Learn what that process is and let's do it ourselves. So literally we bought a wax melting machine overnight, brought in a consultant to teach us how to make candles. And within six months, we were making a fantastic product and today we make over 10,000 candles or diffusers a week. So it's, it just goes to show that what you know, advice and support I received at that time has really put me in good stead. Um, if my family can't help, then um, I speak to my peers, other business owners I've met through my network, such as Goldman Sachs, um, more recently by Women Built Community, which is um, a community of women business owners. Thank you for sharing that. That's incredibly um, inspirational. Um, Sylvia, question for you. What would you like to see more from government and multilateral organisations like the WTO to support women in trade? Um, so I would like the UK government uh, to facilitate the removal of the pink tariffs um, that could be achieved via um, free trade agreement, for instance, or by reducing uh, or eliminating um, the duties um, in general for the affected goods. Um, now, just to briefly explain for the audience benefit, um, the pink tariffs are additional costs that are placed on products marketed to women, uh, which are often resulting in higher prices. Um, compared to similar products marketed to males. Um, so for example, cosmetics or uh, personal care products. Now, according to the WTO's uh, Women and Trade Report, uh, the pink tariffs, um, if, I may, uh, if I may quote, um, Sorry, um, if I may quote, um, the pink tariffs are hurting women consumers across the world and keeping women workers in developing countries um, away from broader export opportunities and better jobs. Um, okay. In addition to that, um, 
government um, negotiating uh, free trade agreements should always include the gender equality provisions, um, like uh, it will be the case with the UK-India free trade agreement, uh, the point on uh, trade and gender equality, um, as per UK's uh, strategic approach, um, chapter two, um, which aims to, um, and again, if I may um, quote, uh, which aims to promote women's access to the full benefits and opportunities of this agreement as workers, business owners, entrepreneurs, and consumers. Um, seek cooperation to address the barriers which exist disproportionately for women in trade. And last but not least, um, recognize the importance of upholding protections on gender equality. Thank you. Some really um, important topics that you've covered there. So, Ginza, did you want to add anything to what Sylvia's raised there? Or anything that you would like to see? I agree um, with what Sylvia was saying in terms of the tariffs um, on, on, on those taxes on, on products. So, I think that there's a lot of work to be done, things that we take for granted, um, you know, and, and you know, things should be given rather than having to fight for it. So I think that there's a lot of work to be done, but I think that as long as we can continue to champion women in business and trade, that that's all going and, and being noted. And I'm, I'm optimistic about the future. Ms. Ginger, what role do you think the IOE and IT as a membership body um, that you're part of has to play in making a difference? So I became um, a member of the Institute of Export and International Trade as a direct result of winning the Queen's Award last year. So we wanted for international trade. And what I didn't know was is that I'd received this complimentary membership as part of that. So it was great to receive that as part of the international trade category. Um, so we trade internationally in over 30 countries. We've grown 168% in the last three years. Um, so I think that what the, the membership has given us is things like this, webinars, um, you know, it's the international technical helpline um, amongst networking and, and other things like that. There's some really valuable resources um, at hand. Thank you. Thank you and congratulations on being a Queen's Award winner. Um, Sylvia, did you have anything to add on um, what you feel that um, um, IOE and IT is um, play a role in? Um, so um in regards to um the um the optimism um the gender equality um can be addressed um i think the modern approach for the ftas um gives the hope for gender equality that can be tackled and can be significantly reduced um as of the other um, legal protections, um, many countries are incorporating uh, new laws and policies uh, to protect women's rights and promote the gender equality, um, like, for example, um, in relation to the gender pay gap, um, Iceland made it illegal to pay women less than men, uh, that law, uh, and that law was enforced, um, I think, it, in 2018, in January. And then a final question before I hand back to Will, um, so to, to Ginger, first to yourself. What are the main tips for your fellow women in trade on today's webinar? Um, so my, I, I've got three key pieces of advice. Um, one would be to expand your networks, find help with the Institute of Exports and International Trade or bodies specific to your sector and, and meet the challenges head on. There's going to be many and that's just part of the journey. Thank you. Sylvia? Um, as of the tips, um, yeah, I, I would like to share today. Um, be curious, ask a lot of questions, um, challenge everything, um, never let anyone underestimate you. And um, I think most importantly, let's look out for each other. Thank you, Sylvia. Um, to Ginger, Sylvia, thank you both for being um, on the panel session this afternoon. Um, back to you, Will. Thank you. Thank you to, to all, all three of you. I think that was a really inspirational panel and also quite uh, educational as well. I, I, the pink tariffs topic was something I didn't know all that much about and that's really um, opened my eyes to that. So thank you Sylvia and some really inspir inspirational tips from, from, from both of you. So thank you so much. Um, now we're going to do just a couple of things before we finish today's uh, webinar. Um, first of all, 
we are going to just one last poll um, and this is asking you how you typically overcome the challenges which you've experienced in international trade and you can say all that apply on this poll and remember you can say um, anything other in the comments as well but just while people are answering that poll I, I wonder Sangeeta or Kelly if you have any final remarks which you'd want to give about what's been said at this webinar and what we can take forwards from it as both men and women in, in supporting women in trade. Uh, Kelly, do you, want, do you want to go first? Yeah, no, thank you, Will. Um, today has been brilliant to bring um, people together to talk about such an important topic. Um, I think it's important that we continue to support um, females, women within the international trade um, and ensure that in, entrepreneurs in the UK have a voice um, the challenges that they're still facing. So, for example, um, access to funding is currently one of the biggest challenges for women and entrepreneurs within the UK. Um, so today's been great to just highlight some of the challenges um, and continue to ensure that the topic is heard. And Sangeeta, do you have any final remarks you'd like to make as well? Yes, th thank you so much, Will. Yes, I think this is actually a very important day um, and it's a day when we should celebrate the achievements of women. Not only look at the challenges, but see how women have actually been able to break the glass ceiling there. Um, and um, also try and find ways and means by which we can support women who are still trying to break the glass ceiling and help them um, overcome all the barriers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sangeeta. Uh, and thank you everyone for answering the poll as well. So 76% uh, of you saying online research is really interesting. It shows the power of, of the internet to, to I guess, uh, connect people, but also help people to, to find information and, and to educate themselves on, on how to do trade, but also how to find support. So that's really interesting. Uh, over half of you have said uh, either government export support services or professional business networks like the Institute or OIT mentioned by Noreen earlier. Uh, and 27% of you say export management companies. So thank you everyone for answering that poll. Um, but we are going to start wrapping up. We'll play the, a video at the end, but um, just before we do, uh, another thank you again to Sangeeta, Kelly, Tajinda, Sylvia, Noreen and Hunter. Uh, we hope you found today's webinar useful, informative and hopefully a little inspiring too. A reminder, we will be sending a recording of today's webinar in the follow-up email which you should get in the next day or so. Please do get in touch if for any reason this email doesn't come through to your main inbox. Our next webinar is on Wednesday 15th March about the upcoming deadline for exporters to start using the Customs Declaration Service. Perhaps a less inspiring topic, but still an important one for UK traders. You can go to export.org.uk for more information about that event and all our other webinars and activities, including how to join as a member of the Institute, and the educational and consultancy services we provide to businesses and individuals looking to thrive in international trade. But as we leave, um, there is an exit survey. Do let us know what you thought of today's webinar and any suggestions for future, to future topics. But uh, Phil, if you want to play the video, I think we'll, we'll use the video as our outro. Today at the Institute of Export and International Trade, we're celebrating International Women's Day as both our staff and members. The Institute has been working with stakeholders around the world to ensure that women have the same opportunities as men in international trade. This includes partnering with multinational organisations like the World Trade Organisation advising national governments on gender chapters in trade deals and talking with our members and the wider trade community about the challenges and opportunities women have in international trade. And that's why the IOE and IT stands and strives for inclusivity, opportunity and equality in international trade. At the IOE and IT, we are committed to empowering women through international trade. We call on all women and men around the world to work together to achieve this important mission. So, on behalf of the Institute of Export and International Trade's global team, we wish you the happiest of International Women's Days. Feliz Día Internacional de la Mujer. Dünya Kadınlar Gününüz kutlu ve mutlu olsun. Başarılar dilerim. 
heri siku hii ya kimataifa ya wanawake. Wazo ni una port. Malega ya pamba ipiga aro na mara kababa ya. La mulsian futuror femeilor. Thank you everyone and happy International Women's Day.